During the Disney Parks panel at Orlando's Destination D23 event, Chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, Josh DeMiro, gave fans some exciting peeks at what is to come for the future of Disney Parks. As with any big announcements, fan opinion has been pretty divided. The promise that the parks would be expanding was exciting to hear, but also very much expected. But with the lack of concrete information given, many fans are fearful of being too optimistic for plans which may never deliver. In this video, I want to take a look at what was said and what exactly this all means. As Destination D23 is held at Walt Disney World's Contemporary Resort, a large part of the panel revolved around what would be coming to Walt Disney World. For the Magic Kingdom, we received confirmation that the Hatbox Ghost would be materialising in the Haunted Mansion late November. As had already been confirmed, this ghost would be located in the endless hallway portion of the attraction, placing him before Madame Leota delivers her incantation, which is what actually summons the spirits inside the mansion. Expectedly, this seemingly plot inconsistent choice had been met with a lot of pushback from fans. Josh DeMiro did address this choice, stating that the Hatbox Ghost comes and goes whenever and wherever he pleases. Now, I'm not going to sit here as some Haunted Mansion purist and declare this terrible, because who am I to tell Disney how their Haunted Mansion works? However, I will say that this feels like yet another instance where Disney is making strange choices which ultimately make things harder for themselves. Fairly reliable Disney news sources have suggested that cost is the reason why the Hatbox Ghost will not be located in the same place as he is in Disneyland. Nevertheless, I am very excited about the addition of this piece of Disney history to Magic Kingdom's Haunted Mansion. A rather large announcement was delivered concerning the future of the Country Bear Jamboree. As a personal favourite, I've always been fearful that this attraction might one day find itself on Disney's chopping block, particularly when strong rumours surfaced that the bears would be replaced by a new Toy Story show. Now, thankfully, the attraction isn't leaving entirely, but like many others, I am a little fearful that its unique essence might be. The current version of the Country Bear Jamboree will be replaced by the Country Bear Musical Jamboree in 2024. The Country Bear Musical Jamboree will be inspired by the musical reviews of Nashville and will see the bears reimagine classic Disney songs in different genres of country music. The Country Bear Jamboree has seen some changes in the past, with seasonal versions and a shortening that occurred in 2012. However, it's the addition of Disney songs that has got many of us a little nervous. We've seen the addition of Disney characters to Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room go wrong in the past at Walt Disney World. Although I am a fan of Tokyo's Stitch version, so long as Walt's original version remains untouched at Disneyland. Thankfully, it doesn't seem any new characters will be added to the Country Bear Jamboree, and almost all the classic bears seem to be remaining. I say almost, as Liverlips McGrawl seems to be being reimagined as Romeo McGrawl due to the racist origins of his original name. So long as the character remains, I don't see this change as a significant one, more just an understandable one. These characters are so iconic and synonymous with the Country Bear Jamboree that it would be impossible to have any version of this attraction without them. Fans are a little suspicious that part of Disney's drive to update this attraction may be to remove some of the more mature humour that is present within the show. There's no confirmation of this, and it's so subtle that surely few parents have to answer any questions from their children who just innocently laugh along. This certainly isn't a redhead case, although maybe Disney disagrees. Nevertheless, the changing of this classic and the introduction of Disney songs does make many worry that this attraction will become something simplistic that panders to children, giving very little for older audiences, 
who are the fans of the classic version, to enjoy. It certainly does look like another example of Disney shoveling in IP where it maybe isn't needed. However, I completely understand the need to update this show from Disney's standpoint. And although I'm skeptical, if done well, I can see the merits of this change. In addition to this, a new Pirates of the Caribbean tavern is being developed for Magic Kingdom, featuring the return of Peg Leg Pete also known as the Barker Bird that was once stationed outside the attraction. Peg Leg Pete stood at the entrance from when the ride opened in 1973 until the 2006 update that added the movie characters. Not only is this a nice reference to the past, but the arrival of a bar or lounge at the Magic Kingdom has felt inevitable since the addition of alcohol to sit-down restaurants. I'm personally good with all this and I'm very excited to see the tavern once it opens. The Magic Kingdom certainly needs more air conditioned places to take a break and bringing back an original Walt Disney World character is superb for us hardcore Disney Park fans. Just like at last year's D23 Expo, Disney shared some of their Blue Sky updates. These are ideas that are still in their very early stages making it hard to get too excited about them as they are so distant and also very likely to change or maybe not even happen. Demero brought up the Beyond Big Thunder Mountain expansion to Magic Kingdom that was initially introduced at D23 in 2022. With Walt Disney Imagineering Chief Creative Officer Bruce Vaughan sharing that the expansion will be similar in scale to Pandora the World of Avatar at Disney's Animal Kingdom and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios. This means it will be the biggest expansion in Magic Kingdom's history. Now, any large-scale expansion to Magic Kingdom is exciting and needed due to the fact that this is of course the most visited theme park in the world. Not much more information was given about this, but it seems likely that it will include lands themed to Coco, Encanto, and an entire area dedicated to Disney villains. Although, Encanto seems to be coming more unlikely as it is making its way to Animal Kingdom. Another Blue Sky idea, Dinoland USA at Animal Kingdom, is planned to be transformed into a Tropical Americas themed land, featuring stories from the Encanto and Indiana Jones franchises. We didn't see any specific details in the Tropical America's Land concept art that indicated specific Indiana Jones attractions, but it seems very likely that Dinosaur will become Indiana Jones. A land devoted to Central and South America would definitely fit well with Animal Kingdom's African and Asian lands. The part of this that I don't like is the likely loss of Dinosaur. For an attraction which will be a clone of one that already exists in both Anaheim and Tokyo. Plus, it's yet another example of IP replacing original ideas within Disney parks, something which often feels like an easy choice at the expense of creativity. Nevertheless, I do think this idea is better than many that seem to have floated around, but I do feel that Encanto would fit better as a part of a new Columbia Pavilion in Epcot's World Showcase. Also at Animal Kingdom, a Zootopia 3D show is in the works to replace its tough to be a bug inside the Tree of Life. It was previously theorized that we might see Shanghai's Zootopia land make its way to Animal Kingdom, but this seems not to be the case. I see this as a good thing, as like many others, I believe Zootopia isn't a perfect fit for Animal Kingdom, as although it features animals, its allegorical themes and messages are very human in nature. Nevertheless, for just one show, like was achieved with its tough to be a bug, I do think Disney will be able to create an experience that fits Animal Kingdom's messages of conservation. Plus, Seeing that the show will feature the Officer Clawhauser audio animatronic we've already seen in Shanghai is exciting enough alone. The one issue I have is placing Zootopia characters inside the Tree of Life, as it seems that these animals who can build cities 
would have no need to be located in a giant tree. So I'm not sure how Disney are going to make this aspect of it work. For Epcot, we received a couple of opening dates for things we already knew were well on their way. Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, is opening on October the 16th, and the Figment Meet and Greet has opened already on September the 10th. More excitingly, but also not too far off, Soarin is getting a throwback to celebrate Disney 100. Soarin Over California will temporarily return from September the 22nd. An exciting fact, as most fans prefer this version of the attraction due to its lack of CGI, despite the fact that it doesn't really make much sense for Epcot. Nevertheless, seeing a figment meet and greet and soaring over California return to Epcot is nice for those of us who are nostalgic for Epcot's past, although neither really go far enough back to capture the essence of what most truly miss. As well as all this, World Celebration was announced to be opening in December, although we didn't really get any new information about this area. In addition to this, the name for the new Epcot Nighttime Spectacular has been announced, Luminous, The Symphony of Us, which will debut on December the 5th. We don't know much about this show, but it's hard to believe it will be a worse fit for Epcot than Harmonious and its ugly barges. Let's hope this one gets the balance of fun songs and the Epcot message right this time. Perhaps most intriguing, and potentially most popular, if done well, was the announcement that Test Track is set to be reimagined at Epcot and will take inspiration from World of Motion. Walt Disney World is teaming up with Chevrolet to reimagine the attraction, taking inspiration from the opening day attraction which Test Track replaced. World of Motion was an Omnimover attraction that took guests through animatronic scenes showcasing the history of transportation. The original version of Test Track taught guests about vehicle safety testing, but since its update in 2012, car design became its focus. This new version has been widely criticised for not delivering Epcot's edutainment goal and for looking bland and boring. Thus, a change is something many are very excited about. Imagineers plan to bring that spirit of optimism from World of Motion to the next iteration of Test Track. Hopefully, this will bring something classically Epcot, but also modern and thrilling to the park. From the piece of concept art we've seen, the theming certainly looks like it's getting an upgrade, but we'll just have to wait and see if this ever materialises. Very little seems to have been planned for Hollywood Studios, Although, at Star Wars Celebration 2022, it was announced that Star Tours would receive new destinations in the future. Earlier this year, it was confirmed that some of the destinations would include places we hadn't seen yet in films or television series. At Destination D23, Josh DeMero announced that Ashoka will be joining the Star Tours attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disneyland Park, and Disneyland Paris. No further details on the addition of the Star Wars heroine to this attraction have yet been revealed, but this has got many fans excited. Demero also shared looks at the Fantasy Springs expansion at Tokyo Disney Sea and the upcoming Frozen Lands at Disneyland Paris and Hong Kong Disneyland. Plus, attendees also got to get a look at the Lewis animatronic that will be present in the upcoming attractions, Tiana's Bio Adventure, although there is still no indication when this attraction will open at either Disneyland or Walt Disney World. It was also announced that Asha from Disney's new film Wish will be arriving to Epcot, Disneyland, and Disneyland Paris for meet and greets. Fans also got a first look at the World Jumping Ride vehicles that will be coming to the new e-ticket attraction in Avengers Campus at Disney's California Adventure Park. While a lot of this sounds cool, it's hard to get too excited about concept art that is shown with no dates given in regards to when these things will actually materialise. Just like at 2022's D23 Expo, much of what was announced this time 
again feels like pie in the sky distant promises with little substance or concrete plans. The company seems to be rather unwilling to commit to anything, which isn't that surprising given the company's current predicament. In many ways, Disney are experiencing a time of crisis, with poor box office performances, a faltering streaming service, and rather unstable leadership. On the other hand, if Disney does carry through with the majority of these projects discussed, then the future of Walt Disney World is starting to look a little brighter than it has for many years now. What was clear from Destination D23 was that Disney leadership are listening to their fans and now finally seem willing to do certain things that many fans have been asking for for years now, such as the figment meet and greet and the return of an iconic park character like Peg Leg Pete. I'm certainly not saying that everything they discussed sounds amazing, but compared to the last few years, it is a step in the right direction. So, what do you think? Did the park announcements get you excited, or are you a little more sceptical? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and check out my links in the description.